He makes his own wolf sound effect as he summons a spectral spirit wolf as he punches you. It's great. <laughs> Fucking Yamcha, man. What a dumb. But I now want to discuss The Last of Us. Okay. So to the lovely audience at home, if you've not played the game yet or you want to play the game and you don't want to be spoiled, this is your last chance. Um, all right, thank you for listening. And um, as per usual, check out the links to Lucas's stuff found below. Appreciate it. But I want to talk about some goddamn Last of Us. Uh, I've been, I played that game in one big sitting. And I just want to talk about it because, man, did that game make me feel some things. So, um, you were warned. Spoilers, spoilers start now. Right? All spoilers, full spoilers. Yeah, spoilers start now. Folks at home, you were warned. Um, I'm probably going to load this section to YouTube as well. Again, you've, you've had like 30 straight seconds to click away. So, fuck it. Lucas, Last of Us 2, thoughts? Um... Man, the way that I've been trying to describe this game is impactful. Ah, okay. I've described it as mechanically perfect. Mechanically, it's almost flawless, but um, story-wise, what a flaccid fucking ending and just middle and beginning. And now, I disagree with you, but I'm, I'm wanting to have this discussion. Okay, well, we need to have... First, we need to just clarify, like, Joel dies. And I believe this is probably, like, the sticking point for a lot of people. Where Joel dies, and he is killed by a newly introduced character. So it's a new character to this game. Mm-hmm. And right, so we could probably, just, like, I'm guessing people listening, they know the story. So we don't really need to clarify how it happens. But at no point in that game did I ever stop being pissed off that Abby killed Joel. And I think the game tries to make you sympathise with her. It tries to like, make her actions seem justified. I think it failed on all counts. And I was still pissed off at the end of the game. And I don't think that I grew attached to the character at all. So it failed in that regard. I definitely agree that it failed in that regard. But I did become attached to the like two Scar characters that were then essentially what I believe was meant to redeem Abby in people's because, eyes. But because she has her own last of us with those where they're her Ellie. Yeah, I think like it didn't in my eyes redeem Abby at all, but it did give me two characters that I was emotionally invested in on that side of the story. Yeah, and it's um is it Lev and Yara. Yara. Um which I thought they were cool characters. I really enjoyed their characters and I think to me it was a case of I really give a shit about these two kids and not about the fucking bitch I'm playing as. Yeah, because they're just kids stuck in this world and it's not their fault the world around them is terrible. Mm. Exactly like Ellie in the first game, where it's not Ellie's fault she was born into this terrible, awful world. Yeah. And it's not her fault that she's been forced to deal with these very adult things mm-hmm. and make and have these decisions and things thrust upon her. So you do take on the protector role, but at no point in the game did I ever stop thinking, fuck Abby. Yeah. I hate this character. I hate this character. They are irredeemable. And I think as well, the fact that it it does show you why she did it, but as I say, me and just Jennifer, a, yeah. together with the entire conversation, uh, we, the entire time we were playing as Abby, it was like, we know they're going to try to make us like her, but fuck it. That was too brutal. She went too far. Yeah, and here's what really got it for me, because did you read the leaks at all? Uh, I didn't intend to, but I had a lot of things. So So I I read all the leaks because I I was curious. Mm. And I know in my head that spoilers, unless they're given... I'm weirdly spoiled. If if someone spoils something for me as I'm watching it or playing it, that'll annoy me. Mm. But I knew that The Last of Us 2, it wasn't coming out for a while. So I thought, I'll read them. And I genuinely didn't think the spoilers were real based on how stupid they were. Mm. And I can explain that of, um, I assume that some parts of them were correct, such as Joel dying. Yeah. And that's why Naughty Dog went so hard on trying to suppress the spoilers. Like, we don't want the big twist of the game to get spoiled. Mm -hmm. And I assume that it would be done in a different way. Because when I read the spoilers thread, um, it had this thing in it that you see a lot. Um, when people try and make something seem authentic, which is 
additional details, which air, air, lend an air of legitimacy, but the extra details were so dumb and so on the nose, I thought, well, this is someone making something up to make it to make the game sound worse. And the detail right. that stuck out in my mind is Joel gets beaten to death by Abby with a golf club, which is, again, I thought, well, that can happen. In, maybe that does happen in the game. But the detail that they put in is you get a solid, you get a lingering several second long shot of Joel's destroyed crushed face where you can see brain matter leaking out of his face. And I went, there's no fucking way the game does that. Because if they do that, you will never forgive this character. Yeah. Which I thought, if she kills Joel, that's one thing. If she brutally beats him to death to the point... And then they show us how awful Joel is. And they even... I think a detail in the leaks is you can hear him struggle to breathe. Mm -hmm. There's no way they'll do this because that's too bad. Like Even when Joel tortured characters, it always happens off screen. Yeah, yeah. Or he does something that's off screen. It's like, they'll never do that because that's too stupid because it makes the character irredeemable. Mm -hmm. And then they did it. And I saw it went, they fucking, I can't believe it. They did it. And the fact as well that it was, oh, okay, well, she fully, like, shot his leg in half. Yeah, and I thought, okay, that's bad enough. And they even show you, like, the like, oh, his leg is fucked. Uh, like, yeah, it's not this, like... this game is intensely graphical with his, like, violence and destruction of bodies. Like, his entire, quad, like, the entire bottom half of his thigh is ripped off the bone. Yeah. Which I thought was really weird. And I can bring this up. Uh, because like, this game, the trailers for this game lie to you. Because I went, oh, it's going to be weird. How, I wonder how Joel's going to walk that one off. I had the exact same thing. Of, like, because I looked at like, him later in the game. They do. And there's a trailer where it's Ellie is at in the camp. And she turns around and it's Joel who says, you didn't think I'd let you do this one alone, did you, kid? And it was in uh, Seattle... I think yeah, and when I saw that Seattle. trailer, I saw that trailer around the same time I, the leaks came out, and I thought, well, Joel's going to die, but at the end of the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's going to die in this way at the end of the story after you spend another game with him. And that's how I thought he did. So they show him in the trailer, he's with you. So I, when I saw him get his leg blown off by the shotgun, I went, that's really graphic. Also, that doesn't look like something you're going to be able to walk off. Yeah, how is Joel like, gonna how be- the fuck is he going to grow a knee back? How is he going to do his weird gameplay stuff? How are you going to get... Joel crouch walking behind you. Exactly, yeah. If he's got no knee, unless they do a flashback. Mm-hmm. And then she beats him to death with the golf club. And the fact that it's like, okay, well, she does all that, which is, as you say, just gross and irredeemable. But That's the thing, yeah. It occurs just as she gets her life saved by Tommy and Joel. Yeah, that's and that's what made it really annoying as well, that... She thinks this guy is awful. I hate him. Mm. And that's immediately after her, his first instinct upon encountering her is to save her life. Yeah. Like he saves the life of a complete stranger and places absolute trust in them. Yep. May- maybe showing that he's changed. And that's one thing that I've seen a lot of people annoyed about online is, oh, well, um, the decisions that Joel and Ellie make are not what they would make in the first game. And it's like, it's almost as if there's been four fucking years and Joel's, like, changed his mind a bit on society. Yeah, because he used to be a guy who was all about number one and he mm-hmm. had to survive on his own. But now he's part of a community and he wants to grow and build that community to regain some semblance of humanity and, in effect, get back his own humanity by helping to build something better than himself. And, and it's, it's almost like he started to believe in the innate goodness of people, which is why his first instinct is to offer them a place in his yep. community. Of, oh, do you want to come join our community? It's a, it's a town. We've got food and water. He even offers them before they blow his leg off. Well, at the very least, come back to our town to resupply. Yeah, yeah. And they literally make a point of showing at uh, other points in the game that, yeah, Jackson was very much taking families in and helping people out. Uh, yeah, and, they, uh, and little details you can get from reading stuff mm-hmm. is, um, Joe, when you go, I'm not sure if you read, because I read every single collectible in the game. Uh, every one I found, I read, yeah. And one of them is, it's when you're checking the uh, the logbook of, okay, so what did you find? Mm-hmm. And if you read through it, you'll see, oh, Joel and Tommy went out on a supply, and they found some supplies, they left them here. One of the details is, oh, we found a family in the woods, gave them supplies, and let them go on their way. Yeah. Like, oh, we just found people who didn't even want to join our community, but we gave them supplies to help, mm-hmm. and, and then, like, helped them. Yep. And then... 
And, and if you're going to, like, kill Joel, maybe don't have him be a super nice guy who's reformed when you do it. But to me, that was, like... I think when I started the game and it was like, right, okay, well, this all happens. We're going on a, a vengeance mission. I mm-hmm. was like, okay, cool. Well, they've introduced the zombie character. They've shown how brutal she is. She's completely irredeemable. Let's go fuck her up. Because I thought the entire point was, well, they show Joel's like a nice guy now. He's helping these people out. Oh, they fucked him up in the most brutal way possible. Yeah, and that's like, the problem I had. Where That's the justification. If- I would have been okay if they killed him even that early in the game if it would have just been they shot him in the head. And what I was hoping for, um, or after the fact, I thought, what would I have been okay with? And it would have been if he actually got to have a conversation and if Abby actually confronted him about what he did. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because Joel doesn't ever find out why he's being killed. He just assumes that she's someone he wronged in the past. And I would have... Been, I would have been fine if it had been Abby said you killed my father why did you do it and asked him just why and says to protect a girl I'd do anything and she'd ask are you happy with and something along the lines of well, would you die for her and Joel just looks at dead in the eye and goes absolutely mm-hmm. and then when Ellie runs in and he says don't hurt her and then he can go peacefully knowing I've saved her mm-hmm. I'll, yeah and he can prove right there that he would die for Ellie yeah. absolutely and that would maybe add a bit of some poignant, some some like something more poignant to Ellie's revenge quest, and how pointless they try and make it seem when you know that Joel sacrificed himself for her. Like maybe if she makes the thing of like just leave Ellie out of it, like have Joel say anything like that, and then make that the reason that Abby doesn't kill Ellie even after she comes back, instead of her having a change of heart for no reason. Well, I think the change of heart is the fact because that of Lev. She's focused very much at that point. On, like, I mean, yeah, she goes after them, but up until that point when you're with Lev, it's, I don't care anymore, like, fuck my life, let's go help this kid. And I think as soon as Lev obviously turns around, there's like, no. It's like, okay, well, fuck this life, yeah, get out, get out, and just save the kid. Yeah, but the thing is, though, they give her the exact same character arc as Joel, which makes it, some for me, somehow worse, because Joel had that exact same character arc, and it proved that he changed. And they're expecting us simultaneously to believe that Abby can have the same change of heart, but that Joel also deserved to be brutally murdered for what he did. But then they tell us that it'd be wrong to do the same thing to Abby. But the way I see it is, I think, for me, I, like, knowing the whole story now, appreciate what they did, because for me, um, I was fully along with Ellie's path of vengeance the entire time because of how unjustified Abby was. Yeah, and it makes the thing, and like I said, if it had just been a gunshot to the head, I would have still been pissed off and wanting to get Abby, but I would have been much more willing to sympathise with her if I didn't know that. If, if, if it had just been a gunshot to the head, if it had been instant and quick, and if Joel would have had his moment just yeah. to say why he did it and for her to understand, like, I don't, say something like, I don't expect you to forgive me, but I'm not sorry for what I did. And then in a bout, a bout of anger, she can shoot him. Because okay, it pisses her off, like he said, I'm not sorry for killing your dad. I have been on board with Ellie going after Abby a second time. Well, that's where they have to do that. But that's the thing, but I would have been... if they, when, when Ellie went for Abby the second time, if they'd have had maybe Joel not be killed in such an awful way, I would have started to come around and like, okay, Ellie, you've got what you wanted. Like, why are you doing that? And then I would have... Because that's what the, that's clearly the feeling they want you to have of that second revenge mission they want you to feel like it's pointless. And they want you to not want to kill Abby. I don't know. For me personally, I was... I would have been quite annoyed if I sympathised with Abby at that point. Not even sympathised with her, but agreed with Ellie that let it go. I'm glad that I didn't... Like, personally, I thought it paid off better that at that point I was still on board with... No, oh yeah, I was. One hundred percent. I never forgave the character, and um, I was incensed. Like when the game made me control Abby, uh, mm. I went, "Okay, this is fine." The first time, because I thought, "Oh, it's going to be a little gameplay thing." When I picked up a collect, not a collectible, when I picked up uh, parts for my gun, and I realised, "Oh no, yeah, oh no, they're going to make me play another twenty hours as this character." Mm-hmm. 
fucking hell. Because I thought, oh, maybe they'll make us play a little bit and it'd be a condensed version of her story. It's like, no, you're going to play just as much, as long with Abby as you did with Ellie. Yep. But I don't like this character. Again, I don't know. Like, I don't know what Naughty Dog was hoping, but for Neither me, do I. it works that I didn't like the character still, but that I found Levin Yara's story interesting enough to keep me through. But they're the, the only things I. But I at no point liked Abby, and what made it even worse is that they very clearly, as I want you to understand the rest of the group, they give you a lot of time with the rest of the group. Yeah, and I, the one thing that I thought. I, this is the bit I think felt the most flat, and it's where I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Is the character Mel, and that's mm. the pregnant lady who, who Ellie kills and feels really bad about it. Yeah. Even yeah. though, even though that character tries to stab you, so it's completely one hundred percent self defense. Because uh, what I found so funny about it is like she holds him at gunpoint. Like, I don't want to kill you. Just tell me where Abby is. You know what Abby did is wrong, and I know that you know that because mm. earlier in this, in the later in the game, but earlier for you. Abby has conversations with you where you say that you think she went too far. Or yeah, that you yeah. think it was wrong. So I know that you don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. But you're still going to stab me to protect her and then the game tries to make you feel bad for doing it. And like that character Mel, I thought, okay, so this is the character they're going to try and make you feel bad about killing. Yeah. And Abby has a conversation with her where they talk about what happened to Joel. And I thought, this is the bit that they're going to give her the humanity. And they ask Mel... Oh, so do you not agree with what we did to Joel? She says, no, I agree with it. In fact, I think he should have gotten worse. I just wish I hadn't been there. And, like, and this is the character you want me to feel bad about killing. That they openly admit, yeah, I wish you tortured that man more. The guy that you spent the entire first game playing as and have a really big emotional connection to. And they want me to feel bad about killing the character. In self-defense, he was like, I wish you tortured Joel harder. <laughs> I yeah, just wish I didn't have to see it because it upset really me. For me, that specific line really stands out as a moment where that didn't fit in with any of what the, the character of Mel had shown the entire time. She's supposed to be a fucking doctor. And she's meant to be a very sympathetic, like, quieter character throughout the rest of the game. Well, before everything and about, after. Everything about her design wants you to feel sorry for her because mm-hmm. she has, like, the mousy hair, the mannerisms... Yeah. She has like the slightly bulging eyes because she like so she looks like a scared skittish creature all the time. Mm-hmm. It's like I really wish though you'd murdered Joel harder. I'm really glad that he's dead and rotten in hell. And every other character in her group who you're supposed to want to like and want to spend time with talks the same way. Yep. And then they have like the dude broish conversations about oh man these fucking scars man I fucking hate these guys these weird cult people. And you think oh that's yeah, probably. They seem really weird. They seem awful. Why did this war start again? Oh, yeah, we shot some kids. Yep. <laughs> so, it's so like, I oh, know. there was a truce, and, uh, oh, yeah, some kids started attacking us, so what were we meant to do? Go- we, like, not gun them all down? We gunned down a bunch of children, and they want, to, they want you to sympathise with these people? When you're in that, you're making sport of shooting people with sticks? And for me, I don't know whether it's, um, maybe myself justifying the story in my head a bit but i didn't sympathize with any of them and i'm glad that i didn't but the game clearly wants you to have some kind of attachment to them like even if it's just oh this character's kind of fun to be around like from the very first conversation i had with that manny guy i went i fucking hate him he's a prick yeah because they try to make it oh he's like a he's a cool lothario type character and he's like oh yeah i slept with a lady because I fuck girls, and that makes me a cool, relatable character. And then he cuts in front of a queue. Yeah, and I... That's <laughs> what? The I don't you always know like if it's the game not being written very well, or if it's the game intentionally trying to not make you really like these characters. No, they're trying to make him seem cool. But I don't that's know if they I, are. I read it as they're trying to make him seem cool, and he's like, oh yeah, I, I fuck all the girls. And I'm going to go get that line of, oh man, I kind of wish I was getting drunk and watching anime. Of, oh, so relatable, man. It's like, no, you murder children for sport and, and talk at length multiple times about the fact you really seem to like murdering scars. Yeah, and that's why I think that it may have been intentional for you not to like any of those people. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong on this, but because the Abby's whole like redemption is to 
end up hating Isaac and hating the wolves. It is, yeah, but at the same time, like they're supposed to be her friends. Like they're the people who, when she said, I want to go on a cross-country murder spree, like, yeah, I'm on board. Fuck yeah, I'll, I'll come in. Like they're the people who were all on board for, we want to go torture a man to death, and they're like, fucking yes, on it. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm saying is kind of, like, I think that maybe we're viewing things, well, not maybe, we are viewing things quite differently, but I don't necessarily think that playing as Abby was to make us sympathise with all of the wolves. But uh, Yeah, like, they want you to have the same thing of, like, oh, maybe these guys are the bad guys, but we knew that from the start when they killed Joel. Oh, yeah, totally. totally. And we know that from the lines they have about murdering children for sport. Yeah. It's like, oh, Abby, your moral high ground looks so flimsy on top of the, the bodies of all the children your group has killed. Oh, God. It's such, like, yeah, as we're having this conversation, I'm just thinking about different story points. And it is a very, like, complex story in the way that it, you know, goes off on a lot of tangents and stuff. Like, if you look at the overall main arcs, it's not actually that complicated a story. It's no, quite a it's a revenge story. Story. It's a revenge tale. But I think, yeah, to me, there's. I read it as like there being quite a lot of nuance in. Maybe you aren't like to. meant to like the people that you're playing as and meant to actually see, oh, you know, I hate this fucking group and Ellie's justified in hating these people. But then they don't commit to that because then by the end of it they're like oh no but Abby there's some humanity in her there really wasn't like even Joel in his worst fucking days like the worst thing you see him do in the previous game is when he's torturing those two dudes Mm -hmm. to find out where Ellie is and even he is justified doing that because those guys are cannibals yeah and I think it's weird because they hinted at well maybe Joel did something like you don't know about Ellie and she's like yeah totally I know he did because he lived in a rough time and he mm-hmm. needed to do it to survive. And he doesn't feel sorry for doing that because he's alive. But like, Abby, did you really need to torture this man to death? Like, you could have shot him. And Joel even said, like, he, he re- he's resigned to his fate. He doesn't even know who she is. Yeah. He's like, just say your speech and get it over with. You're going to shoot me, shoot me. And I it's think that would have been... to a... me that they would put that line in when it did just turn out to be, oh yeah, the hospital scene. He shot his dad. That guy was going to cut the head open of a small child. And that's one th- interesting part because I know Abby feels justified to herself because she says that line of like, yeah, dad, um, if it was me in that position, I'd want you to kill me and kill well, people. But you the can thing see is, though, in the dad's eyes of like, I wouldn't kill you. That's the thing, yeah, because she says that to like, and the game tries to tell you of like, see, look, Abby would have been fine to die. It's Joel who was the bad guy, but... It's not Joel, it's not her who needs to say that, it's the dad. Yeah. And in that thing, if that would have been her, you can see that he would have absolutely done the same thing of Joel, have killed the guy who was trying to do it. Yep. And as well, there's um, I think this is a behind the scenes thing from The Last of Us 1, where they were actually going to make whether shooting the doctor at the end of choice. And then they decided, no, we're going to commit to our story, yeah. No, it wasn't. It's uh, well, That's one of the reasons they did, but another one was that in playtesting, 99% of players immediately shot the Doctor. I found Without... it very interesting when I played it for a second time to play with Jenna. Um, the first time I played it by myself. And I was fully on board with, fuck everyone, I'm going to go murder that Doctor. I and immediately shot didn't hesitate. Head, yeah. But then Jenna did and was like, can I not save him? I was like, yeah, you can. And you can't. No, you, um, you can't. have a prompt to stab him with the scalpel. Mm-hmm. But like 99% of um, players immediately just shot him in the head the moment they walked into the room. So they didn't make it a choice. They just put in the extra cut scene or the contextual thing and you can stab him with the scalpel. Mm. But like, even when you look at the Fireflies as a group, even they were fucking irredeemable. Because you can find the surgeon's own notes about the fact he's experimented on other people and it didn't work. Yep. Where he talks about performing the same experiment, the same brain removal experiment on other people who were infected. And that's the thing is, um, I believe that's why he's so quick to know that Ellie has to die is because he's already been doing this shit. And he knows it has to happen. But at the same time, then we have like the fireflies, we have Marlene go, they give her the complete flip reversal on her opinion initially. Mm-hmm. Where she's like, oh, do we have, like, I don't want to kill Ellie. 
Whereas early, like in the previous game, like your first thing was to tell Ethan, like the guy who was scorched Joel, if he moves, shoot him. Like, I want you to murder this man because he's the only person who knows what's going on. Oh, shit, yeah. But they try and, like, re- like walk it back of, actually, no, she was really, like, sad to kill Ellie. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, man, like, they try to walk it back so hard. And it's the same thing of, like, the Fireflies were all pricks. Why would you rejoin them? Yeah. And then even after Abby's arc of, oh, yeah, she's left the wolves, she, re- she, she tries to go rejoin the fucking Fireflies again. I think it was really weird that, like, I think it worked because it it helped the payoff at the end. Um, but it was really weird that, oh, it's all about, like, the Fireflies, the Wolves, the Scars. And then out of nowhere in the Santa Rattlers. Barbara, there's just, like, a different group. That you never get any. It's almost like that bit felt, that felt bit at the end felt so fucking tacked on. Um, yeah, and I, I think, as I said, like, to then have them at a common point at the end, I think it works, but it was very weird. Just, oh, here's a new guy. And I get that, yeah, in this world, there's factions everywhere that are doing the same thing and it's all fucked up. Yeah. But it it felt very out of fucking left field to just be like, oh, new group. And the weird thing is I wanted to spend more time there because I was really curious. Because like everywhere you spent the game previously, it's been really cold. Or in the case of Seattle, really wet. And the few... Like the few infected you actually encounter, which is an optional encounter when you're going through that neighborhood at Abbey, are all sun scorched. Yeah. And yeah. they go to the effort of showing that these ones have been burned by the cordyceps. And I thought that's a really interesting thing I like to see explored more. And you're, in, you're there for five minutes. And like they went to the effort of, like, oh, they animated and also they gave like new textures to the, like, the infected out here. But then you yeah. encounter five of them. And I think. As we, as you mentioned very early on in this Last of Us discussion, the game, it probably shows for how long it took. The game technically is just fucking ridiculously. Oh yeah, every single room in that game is unique, and I believe every in- individual um, person you encounter has a unique face uh, and a unique name. They have a new name, which um, for me fell is the flattest falling thing ever. Where they initially said, oh, every character has a face and a name, so you feel bad about killing them. But the moment you... If you can, you can walk up to them and you see Ellie, who's like a 120-pound white girl. Yeah. Like, and they'll walk up to her, and the, their first reaction is to unload on you with a shotgun. Mm-hmm. It's like, why would I feel bad about killing them? So maybe, like... It, it felt so flat for to me. to delve into, yeah, the gameplay of it, because yeah. I personally try to avoid a lot of firefights... I didn't because I realised it doesn't matter. They'll no enemy in this game will show you any mercy. And one of the things that pissed me off is again because I, I know what the game's trying to do is in selecting counters, the final guy you kill will go down onto his knees and yeah. beg for their life. Oh, I never saw that. Oh, it's a scripted thing at the end of some encounters where the last guy will like fall down injured mm-hmm. and just talk to you, and they'll either beg for their life. Or just say, please don't do it, or look me in the eye when you kill me. Oh, the problem right, okay. is, they're putting that in to make you feel bad for killing them. But if yeah. you just stand still, eventually they'll pick a knife up and try and stab you. I never so, noticed that, because as I said, yeah. like I avoided a lot of firefights. And a lot of the time for me, it was not because I didn't want to hurt them or anything. It was just a, oh, in this game, it's quite open, and you're against quite overwhelming odds. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, a lot of the time, it was maybe get a stealth kill or two. And then as soon as they see me, just fucking run. Just run away. Well, I didn't do that. And I, I murdered everyone. Because fuck you. Uh, but like, I felt like that moment, it felt so flat. Cause I can see, you can see the strings that are yeah, trying to yeah, tug yeah. at your heart. Of, Don't you feel bad killing this guy? He's begging for his life. It's like, no, because you're going to program him to stab me if I leave him. There's no option I have here to end this conflict that doesn't involve me pressing the square button to finish him off. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's just me being cynical about it, but I, you're doing it to make me feel bad. But it doesn't work because I the f- did avoid killing people. Dogs. Uh, okay, so don't kill I dogs. We'll confirm. Me and Jenna played through the entire game. The only time a dog died was the one cutscene where it has to happen. Yeah, and then they try and make you feel bad about it. Yep. By making you play fetch with the same dog, even though it's the game that killed it in a cutscene that's unavoidable. Yeah. Um, but and again, yeah, like, the again, only time I killed flat. 
Uh, the only time I avoided humans uh, specifically was when you make your way over to the island where all the seraphites are, the scars. Yes. And when it's done a, a relatively all right job of like showing like Lev and Yara as, you know, nice children that are just kind of caught up in this, I was like, I don't want to murder all these people of like your, uh, Lev's like basically family and friends while they're trying to run away and being invaded. Yeah. Well, I did kill every single one of them, and Lev never makes any sort of comment about it. He doesn't care. That's I, one really weird thing is, like... I'll be honest, mate, right? Because the combat in that game is so fun. And by the end of the game, I basically, like... I was Batman. Because the thing that I know you about Abby is, I hate the character. Her yeah. gameplay is so fun. Because I'm guessing if you didn't really do much combat, you didn't get the perk. Um, the I think it's the adrenaline perk. Oh, no, I got called. that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, the adrenaline perk is like you, if you kill an enemy with a strike attack, your next physical attack will be a strike, mm-hmm. which turns that game, the combat in that game, is now the most fluid shit ever. Yeah. Because you can chain together melee kills like you're in Far Cry or something, but it feels way more organic. And every single encounter I had in that game was me sprinting directly towards the enemy with a brick in hand and just <laughs> obliterating everyone in a few moves. Because and it's so fluid. It did feel and... really good when I pulled that off, but I didn't charge into combat that often. Oh, I was doing it for every single combat encounter. Every single one, because it felt so fun to do. And um, I, I remember like, when I realised, oh yeah, this is a Last of Us game, you've got the punch lasers, so you've yeah. got the ability, like everything's contextual, is um, a clicker was running at me and I shot it in the leg and it fell over and I pressed square and Abby just stomped on the back of its head. Yeah. And I went, that's the coolest thing ever. So every encounter with clickers was me just shooting clickers in the knees and then punching them <laughs> in the back of the head to then get the bonus to punch harder, which would then be followed by her just knocking a clicker out with her bare hands. Oh, so, oh I never a clicker. got to use that against clickers. because You I can use it on clickers. Late. And if you can donkey punch a clicker, it kills them in one. And if it doesn't kill them, it stuns them, which like, opens them up for a brick throw into another punch. So... In my playthrough, Abby is just punching everything to death. And to be fair, and it's super at fun. Her, I think she could pull it off. Yeah, and it's super fucking fun to do that, and her gameplay is really great. And it annoys me that that's an ability she has and not Ellie. Because Ellie is like more stealth orientated, but it means that you can't take the aggressive approach, which is more fun with the gameplay mechanics that exist. And like the contextual um, uh, fight scenes and stuff, like if someone's near a brick wall, you'll push them into the wall. Or if they're injured in a certain way, you'll deliver certain attacks. I mean, I like, guess just so, like, but Abby have a lot more freedom. Has that with a knife. She does, but like, Abby's just got the sheer raw like, man strength. She does, yeah. Like that fucking, just the raw, of just like those giant beefy arms. Um, Did you see as well, they made those arms bigger? No. Um, in the very in the first trailer where Abby's in it, because she's not named in the trailer, but she's in the trailer where they, um, um, where it's Yara, gets her arm broken. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like she's in that trailer, and in that trailer, people look at where she's she's athletic. She's clearly very toned, mm-hmm. like very fit and in shape. Um, but like, it's more akin to what Ellie looks like at the end of a game, right? Do you, know, right, you see yeah. like Ellie in the vest, and she's just like she's toned, but she's not ripped. Mm-hmm. And then later in the game, for some reason, they just gave her these giant arms, which I know that people can get in shape like that. And I know that it's a woman with an atypical body type, and I applaud it. I couldn't, because she's got such a, a young-looking face, all I could picture is, you know, that episode of Spongebob where he gets the inflatable arms? <laughs> That's the only thing I could see, because they give her such a young face, and she has the same face and she's a child. Yeah, and but just, I, like, I her, do her, think her, that that, you know, quote-unquote child version of her is probably, what, about 17? That's what freaked me out, though, because she's really short. Uh, yeah, I guess so. But like, And I assumed that... To give her the parallel with Ellie, she's around Ellie's age, like 15, 16 years old maybe. And mm. what weirded me out is when she's talking about Owen, her boyfriend, he looks like he's like 25 or 30. That was weird, yeah. And it made me really uncomfortable because he looks so much older than she does. And in it's supposed the younger be... cutscenes, yeah. Yeah, in the younger cutscenes. Like, they look roughly the same age when they're old, but like, she looks like 15, 16 years old, if not younger, in those early cutscenes. And they're talking about her dating a guy who looks like he's like 20-odd. Yeah, that I found really odd. They didn't either, like, you know, they made her look too young or they didn't make him look young enough. Young enough, yeah, because he still has, like, a full beard and everything. Yeah. 
And yeah, I I like I, Abby's design, but like her arms just are so massive. I did appreciate though that it shows the oh, gym. The, where where does she sleep? Like, next right to the next gym, to the massive gym. <laughs> And they have a line in it where she lifts up uh, the guy and says, "Yeah, I pushed um, 175 pounds this morning on yeah. the weight machine." So it's that it makes sense that like she's working out all the time. But then you look at her, what does she eat per day? A single burrito. <laughs> she has one burrito. It's like to get to that size. Like we talked about me going to the gym earlier in this podcast. Like you need to have like four or five thousand calories a day just to maintain. Yeah. Like there is absolutely no fucking way she could get that level of muscle mass on the diet they apparently have. Unless she is taking all of the steroids. And for me, it was distracting more than anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, I should say, like, I think it's a good character design. Like, if you just look at her as a character. But yeah, when you put it in the context them. of, yeah, they eat one, like, small meal a day. It's like, how are her arms that big then? And I actually like a design at the end of the game where she's lost some of the muscle mass, but she's still clearly very toned and in shape because she's in, like, some sort of work camp. Mm-hmm. And I thought... That physical design looks so much, and it's still intimidating. Because when you compare it to Ellie, who's like more waif-like, yeah, it's like she still looks physically intimidating. And I don't get why. Like I said they changed it between the trailer and the final product, but they made her so much buffer. Yeah, yeah. To the point where she's like bigger than some of the guys she's with, who were apparently in the same military regiment. But I imagine for her character, that they is wanted her to be a physical the overcompensation. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, yeah, and they wanted to make her a physically imposing threat, and they wanted to give her a different gameplay thing. Mm-hmm. Of like, she is like she's like clearly a lot stronger and more physically capable than Ellie is. Um, but, she's uh, clearly so that, meant to be um, akin to like Joel gameplay. It is, yeah, and that's like that's the replacement for it. So it's probably a gameplay reason of like if she did have the design she has at the end, and she's doing some of the stuff she does in that game, like she's beating clickers to death with her bare hands. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't believe that as much. I can believe that the Abby's in the game as it is. That Abby can beat a clicker to death. Yeah, and I found it really funny because you know there's the boss fight of the big bulge of cordyceps. Oh, that which I thought was super fucking interesting. I did too. I thought that was a really cool enemy, and, and it's there's and the like background the one, of a uh, smaller bit that falls off it. Yeah, and becomes an enemy in itself. I got like trapped in a room just with it and I ended up punching it to death to the point where it was running away from Abby. Yeah, because it runs away when you do enough damage to it and so you have to fight it separately. But I love that boss and I like the explanation of, oh, this is the ground zero for the Cordyceps and we just dumped all the bodies in a room, not Mm -hmm. thinking about it and all the bodies grew together into this writhing mass. I think it's called the Rat King, which is a super cool name for a boss. If you know what a Rat King is, it's a... Uh, if a bunch of rats all live in close proximity, sometimes their tails get stuck together mm-hmm. and it just forms this tangled mass of just like disease, which I think is very akin to what that enemy is. But yeah, yeah. like Abby's gameplay is more fun than Ellie's to me because I like that super aggressive gung-ho attitude and her upgrades are really useful for that. Uh, yeah, but I still played quite aggressively with Ellie when I got oh, I did as well, yeah. one fight. Um, it's like the same way when you play as Ellie in Last of Us 1 and you get a shotgun with Ellie and I was like tiny little baby Batman Ellie <laughs> and there's like these huge buff dudes going around like okay where's this 14 year old girl and she just jumps from the shadows with a shotgun and a grenade ah! <laughs> and it looks fucking awesome and I will say that very final fight where you're breaking in to get Abby like I walked in a straight line towards the enemy with everything I built Every explosive I could. Like my very first encounter with the enemy, go, Who's that? Is that a trespasser? And then a dynamite arrow flies at their feet and they just explode into a cloud. And then, like, all the enemies are, Oh my god, Calvin! (laughs) And I just went, Fucking too right. Like, Ellie is not messing around, she's getting in. And as I say, I played relatively passively for most of the game up until that moment. In that section. Because I knew that the moment they give you the submachine gun, I went, well, this is the last fight area of the game because they did the same thing in Last of Us 1 where you don't get an actual gun, a good gun that can be shot multiple times without worrying about it Mm. until the literal last section of the game where it's just use everything you have. Yeah. So I used every single item. I was blowing people away. I was just running up with the shotgun and just like shooting people in the legs and then just like stabbing. It's moment to moment gameplay. Super fucking fun. And I really enjoyed that they had a couple of infected chained up. Which I just is, let the clickers loose on them. 
Oh yeah, and the clickers um, are really good things to have. But um, that last bit where you've got to run into that room looks so great for me because I had a fully upgraded pipe with the scissors and stuff stacked to it. So it was a one hit <laughs> kill. And I had my fully upgraded pistol. So yeah. my way through that building looked fucking terrifying. Because what it is, it's this 120 pound white girl sprinting in. I shot the first person in the leg so they go down, run up with the pipe, do the full baseball swing, oh. take off, take their, the top of their head clean off which causes the person behind cover to stand up like, oh my God, no, Abby! Yeah. Or like, ins- insert name, they shout. Yeah. To which I then shoot them in the arm to distract them. Baseball bat their head off. Next person, oh God, you killed them! <laughs> Shotgun. <laughs> so it just looked like she ran through with a steel pipe and just ended everybody. Yeah, and I had a similar experience, but I did. I do want to mention like one thing. of When you shoot a leg off clean with a shotgun... The screams. Oh, yeah. They are made sh- curdling. I made sure to do it, though, because I don't feel bad for this enemy. No, yeah, me too. Like they, uh, This enemy, I do not feel bad about killing them. And I deliberately went for, like, toe shots to mm. take off their leg. Because did you know you have special animations if people are writhing around on the floor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have special kill animations for people on the floor. And Abby's, I think, is the worst. Because she doesn't kill them. She just kicks them in the stomach so they can't scream. Yeah. So if you blow someone's leg off and they're like, ah! No, don't ah! Oh, she kicks them in the stomach to like wind them so they can't scream anymore. Because I think it's the like, first oh. time I went like fuck it, no one leaves this room. Because is it's when, just going to cause more trouble. It's when you're playing as Abby and Yara gets shot. Oh yeah, everyone dies. Like th- especially as well when they're taunting you about it. Like hey Abby, get over here, and I was like, I'll fucking come at you then. You want to see? Like, some a, a little like gameplay thing that really annoyed me. Um, mm. I, this is a detail that pissed me off because it's, again it's something I I read it as they're trying to make Abby seem likeable and it was um, in one scene they talk about oh, how many wolves are there I don't know thousands mm. uh, but every single wolf you encounter speaks to Abby and knows her by name And I... every single one every single person you encounter in that game talks to her by name despite the fact there are apparently thousands of these wolves and, no, I, and there's so such a massive group um, there are people that you've never seen, and yet every person she encounters knows who she is. I get at the same time that it's one of those of, oh, well, she's essentially one of, like, the... The best soldiers they have. She's one of the, like, you know, lieutenants to Isaac, I suppose. But, yeah, like, it, it does seem a bit unrealistic when every single person knows her. Like, the bit where you first go up to the uh, the gate, and you think, oh, they're not going to know who she is. Like she holds her hands up and says, no, I'm a wolf, I'm a wolf. And you think, oh, they're going to interrogate about who she is. And then the guy will say, oh, hi, Abby. Especially when, <laughs> earlier on with Manny, they point out how many new people they've got that don't know what they're doing yet. And they all know Abby. Yeah. <laughs> they all know who she is. And again, that's something I read as, oh, they're trying to make her seem likeable. Like, she's so friendly. Everyone knows who Abby is. When I read it as, oh, no, she just murders so many people, her reputation precedes itself. Yeah, probably. Like, if you see the woman, it's like... And as well, like, I found it kind of annoying. I, I know I mentioned like Abby's, like, her arms are so massive and distracting. The fact that that's how people describe her in-game pissed me off. Like when um, Tommy's talking about, oh, I think I found Abby, because the guy described a woman built like an ox. Oh, a little yeah. Asian kid. And I went, okay, sure. And then later in the game where Ellie's looking for her, oh, is it a girl? Ponytail? Arms like mine? Yeah, yeah. He's like, Really? So I get it. Like it's, like it's an atypical body type with the fact that everybody in the game comments on it. Mm-hmm. But they seem to like it only seems to be guys who they're trying to make look bad. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. But, um, I'll be, uh, but like I said, that th- most of the game fell flat for me and I never forgave Abby. And I didn't stream this game because I, like, I wanted to take it on my own pace. But I wish that I had for the moment where um, you, you chase after Ellie and mm. you have to boss fight Ellie. Um, because I wish I'd recorded my reaction to that because I audibly told the game to fuck off, which I never do. I never like usually speak when I'm playing games on my own. Mm-hmm. I audibly told the game to fuck off, put my controller down, and turned off the console. Because I was so mad that the game thought I would want to fight Ellie. Like They yeah. thought, oh, after everything we've made you do, now you're on Abby's side. Surely you want to kill Ellie. It's like, no, I'll never want to kill her, I ever. don't know if you did a similar thing to me. I stood up and let her shoot her. Uh, I 
I found as many different ways for Ellie to kill Abby yeah, as Yeah, I refuse to fight her. Do you know the bit of it like where you've got a puncher and you're like, oh, mash square to choke out Ellie? Yeah. I refuse to do it. I refuse to mash. And weirdly enough, I don't know if you thought the same thing, I thought that was going to be the moment when we swapped perspectives. Yes. Because, oh no, now you've got to fight the super fucking buff. Like, you know how capable Abby is. Yeah. And buff is in the sense that her character has all these skills. Because there was a bit when uh, she slams her against a wall and there was a camera movement where I thought... Yeah, I thought it was going to be... You, you throw... Like, maybe you'll do the first bit as Abby and when you throw Ellie through the wall, then you'll take control of Ellie. Yeah. Because now Ellie's on the back foot and they give you, like, Ellie with half health. Mm-hmm. And maybe it'll do a thing like it swaps between them so you can see the gameplay from the other perspective. Yeah. Because the one thing I liked about that is that Ellie is almost impossible to see in listen mode. And she's so rapid... Yeah, if, like, if you go into listen mode, you can't see Ellie. And like, I thought, that makes sense, because that's why no enemy ever spots her. Yeah, she just darts about. Like There were times when I'd see her in listen mode, but then by the time she's walked off my screen, I, I couldn't find her again. And I thought it was really interesting. I thought maybe it'd be a cool thing to swap between and then see how scary it is to just have Abby running at you. And like you've got to, like, okay, you've got a, a 0.1 second QTE to avoid her like just smashing your face into the wall like she just hit every other person she's fought so far. Yeah, I thought it would have been really cool, and I guess the reason that it isn't is because like Ellie loses the fight, and people wouldn't be happy losing a fight as a player. But then it would have made me feel less bad. Yeah, I would have been fine if I controlled Ellie for that fight and I lost, mm-hmm. because that would have made me more pissed off and want to go do the hunting down thing. But yeah. because they make you control Abby, and Abby wins and wins so handily, and I know she won because. I played as her. If it had been from Ellie's perspective and you've got to fight Abby and Abby still wins. And Abby and is like, just like this fucking unstoppable juggernaut. Yeah, and it's like, oh, even though you've got all your upgrades and like she's coming in without a gun, yeah, Abby still beats you. I can see that me as a player, I'd have been pissed off enough to want to go on to that extra fight scene. It would have been feel like um, Ellie's thing of not only is she pissed off that Joel died, she's pissed off that she lost. Yeah, and I think it was a real like missed opportunity to not do it that way. And it really annoyed me like, the, that the game thinks, like, that they even have the goal to think you'd want to fight Ellie after yeah. everything they've done to make you like her. And it reminds me a little bit of uh, The Walking Dead. Have you played any of The Walking Dead games? Uh, like the Telltale ones. I've played season yes. one. Okay, well in season one, um, it's you and Clementine, is it? It's Lee and Clementine. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of parallels you can draw between uh, The Walking Dead and um, uh, Last of Us. Yeah. Um, like for example, in Walking Dead, you are a you can take control of a, a burly dude who becomes the ward of a young girl. Yeah. Um, yeah in yeah. a post-apocalyptic scenario, and the majority of the game is spent just protecting this girl. Mm-hmm. And in the second game, you play as Clementine herself, the little girl. And again, like you, the player, take on the protector role in this sense, and you grow. You watch Ellie grow and become a more capable character as a result of your actions. In the third game, you play as a completely different character, and you want and you see Ellie from the outsider's perspective so you're not in her group anymore you're not her protector she's a fully independent character and you're witnessing what she does through the eyes of someone in that world who's never encountered her before the problem with that is is that they give you multiple options to side against ellie clem. as if the, uh, sorry? oh sorry not ellie yeah clem clementine yeah. sorry i got confused they give you multiple opportunities in season three to side against clementine as if they don't, as if you haven't played the first two games as her and will never side against her. Like, um, one of the first big decisions you have in that game is um, a guy holding you at gunpoint who tells you, hand over Ellie. And your choices are, hand over, oh, sorry, damn it, I keep getting confused, sorry. Um, hand over Clementine or I'll shoot you. And the big moral choice you have is, hand over Clementine, this girl you've just met in the game, mm. or shoot the guy. Uh, so what okay. do you think? I, and... It's like it's insulting that the developers and the writers think you would ever dis- like side against Clementine yeah. ever. And I believe like um, in those playthroughs, like Walking Dead does a oh how many percentage of players pick this? Like ninety five, if not ninety nine percent of players immediately within one second of that choice coming up shoot that guy. Because <laughs> why would you ever choose a decision that negatively impacts the character they spent in two games making you like? Yeah. And it's the same thing with Last of Us, where they spend this entire game where you protect Ellie. And I found it insulting that they think I want to fight her. <laughs> Why would you think I'd want to shoot this character that I want to win? It was something <clears throat> that I picked up that I found very telling is um, playing through a lot of games, like 
I refer to myself as the player character and I notice like, yeah, when we were playing Last of Us 1 and 2, both me and Jenna were sitting there going like, yes, I'm doing this. And then as soon as the perspective changed to Abby, we only referred to her as Abby. Yeah, Abby would like Abby is doing this. Yeah. And it was I never really like, oh, off. I've just done that. It was, oh, Abby's just done that. And like that just shows like how little I cared about that character. Like from a, like, it, that's why it frustrates like the gameplay is so fun because if if they made her a more redeemable character, or just if she just shot Joel or any of the things we talked about, but um, and which makes brings on to something I wanted to ask you because I thought about okay, so how would I if you keep everything the same, um, is there a way that I would have made Abby likable? My thought was, and this is something I thought was going to happen in the game, and do you know right at the very end in Santa Barbara where mm-hmm. Abby gets caught? Yeah, yeah. And then it smash cuts to Ellie in the same location. Yeah. And you get caught. At that exact moment, when Ellie gets stepped on the trap, I thought, and I'm just going to tell you what I think was going to happen. I want to ask your opinion on like, whether or not it would have been better for you. Because it's probably a little bit cliche, but I think it still would have been cool from my perspective. And it is. Ellie gets caught, and you get sent to the same camp. You get sent to the same prison slash work camp run by these guys as Abby. And okay. you encounter Abby there. And what happens is... Abby and Ellie have a conversation. Because at no point in those games do they ever actually have a conversation. Mm-hmm. They have a standoff with a gun. And yeah. I think as well, like during the standoff where Abby has you at gunpoint, the insinuation there is she tells Ellie everything she did in the previous three days. Which I found out after the fact that's supposed to be the intention of that gunpoint standoff is Abby telling her what she just did. Did you read it like that? No. That Abby talks about, all oh, my friends are dead, you don't know what I've done anyway. Um, and I thought, oh, here's what you do, is you have Abby and Ellie, they're trapped in prison, they can't fight, and if they fight, or maybe have them have a scuffle and the guards, like, you know, hit them or something, or mm. threaten to shoot them. So they're forced into a situation where they can't fight, but they have to talk. And yeah. Ellie talks about the fact that Joel saved her, and that he, kill, and that he killed her dad to save her, and they, re- and they have that understanding of, they don't, Forgive each other, but they understand why each one did what they did. Mm-hmm. And maybe it would have been a bit easier to swallow if she didn't brutally beat Joel to death with a golf club. But I think even then, maybe if they'd had a conversation, I'd have been like, okay, if Ellie can forgive her and I see that happening, maybe I will too. And that could have given you, as the final gameplay section, you now play as Ellie with Abby. Mm-hmm. And then you have them both, and then the final fight where you're escaping and killing all the bad guys, and you have all the power weapons, and it's basically this is the last hurrah where you have ev- access to everything. It's you and Abby, and you both have your end game loadouts. And um, it maybe even gives you the choice to play as one or the other, or maybe you switch between them. Yeah. Of like Ellie will sneak off and do something, and you get to see their both gameplay. Instead, it's just oh Ellie goes through, and you have a fist fight in the rain. And I just want to ask your opinion because that's I sat down for like half an hour. Because I'm sad like that and thought, okay, how would I make the story better? What would I have found more satisfying? What do you think of like that as the ending? Because that's genuinely what I thought was going to happen when Ellie gets strung up. I thought, oh, they're going to send us to prison. They're going to do the cliche thing. We're both in prison and we're both going to, we're going to fight together to fight our way out of prison. And during that, we're going to have a begrudging respect. And the ending of the game will be Ellie looking at Abby and just say, just go. And they'll part ways, not forgiving each other, but understanding. That's exactly how I thought it was going to go down. Oh, okay, so you had the exact same thought as me then. And would uh, you have found no. that more or less satisfying? Uh, I think overall, I would have found it less satisfying, to be honest, because oh, okay. I really enjoy that moment of Ellie, like, you know, forcing Abby to have the fight and then being in that position where she kill it and just go, like, no. But that annoyed me because it's the games telling you, oh, man, look, she's so defeated. Like, look at Abby, she doesn't even want to fight. Don't you feel bad attacking this opponent when that's the exact same thing she did to Joel? Uh, it's a completely defeated opponent who's at your mercy. It's like, oh. And they even do the thing of like when you fight, when you whip out a switchblade and you're slashing her and she's recoiling in pain of like, oh no, you've slashed me with the knife. Like, look how pathetic and weak I am. It's like, this is exactly what she did to Joel and now the game's telling me this is a bad thing. Like, the game's trying to make me feel bad for this. <laughs> the thing, thing she did. The impetus yeah, of this never, entire I never game. Felt bad for it because I understood where Ellie was coming from, but I was kind of like that moment of just I I really appreciate that moment where just for the first time Ellie sees Joel in her head and it was in a good context and she goes, "That's it, I'm done. That's all I need." All I need. But uh, how ham-fisted was it though that 
um, Abby bites off the two fingers she needs to play the chord. Oh god, yeah. So she can't now. She can't play Joel's guitar. Yeah, and I that annoyed me so that I, because that's what made me think of. Okay, my ending in my head is like the one of oh they they fight together and team up is a really cliche thing to have happen, and it's like it's what you'd expect. It's the safe way to do it, I think. But at yeah, the same I think that's time, probably why we both thought of the exact same ending because and it's it probably is why it didn't the cliche thing. And it's why it didn't happen because they wanted to subvert your expectations for that. But yeah. I don't think it could have been any less uh, any less ham fisted than oh no, Abby bites off the two fingers so she plays guitar. So now Ellie doesn't have that connection to Joel anymore because her revenge mission stole it. Even though Joel's whole impetus for saving her was revenge, <laughs> almost like it's a valid thing to do. It's like oh, so bad. Like it's hitting you over the head with the symbolism. Yeah, like I, I can see that. I agree with that. And um, it's why I, I think like my ending, which as cliche as it would have been, is it any more ham-fisted and forced than the visual representation of she bites off the two fingers she needs to play the chord? I mean, and yeah, then they I even agree. have the bit like, of a. I, to play I think the it guitar. wouldn't have been any less with ham-fisted, but with I think two fingers way missing. Um, oh, Revenge costs you everything. And that's the thing is, that was definitely the the like whole structure of the story because the whole point is all three characters go through the same arc of like, well, Joel gets his comeuppance for revenge, then Abby does, then Ellie does. And it's just kind of like, well, maybe like Ellie does, Abby does, you know. It kind of, they both... Abby gets, Abby gets off Scott for it. Revenge missions. Abby gets off Scott. She has like a couple of months where, oh no, she struggled for a little bit. She was in this horrible prison camp. Well, also, She's you a... know, all of her friends her entire life got upsided by Ellie. But she hates them. So it's, I just, I, they tried. So it's like, oh, it felt like the trap made you feel bad for like kicking a wounded puppy because Abby just doesn't want to fight. Mm-hmm. And at no point did I think, no, I, I want to, and I never stopped mashing square and I got mad when Ellie stopped. Yeah. yeah. No! Kill her! Murder her! I I think I would have, like, regardless, been okay with what they did at that point. Because I think Ellie got what she needed. But yeah, I the also catharsis. wouldn't have been upset if she just murdered her. And that's the question. That, and it all comes back to if Joel's death hadn't have been as brutal and over the top. I don't think I would have had half, like, as half as negative reaction to it. Because I was fully fine with the character dying. Mm-hmm. I was okay with that. It's just that... It's almost like, I think the word like torture porn really does cover that, of just the amount of detail they put into showing you how much he suffered, and like the lingering shot of his crushed skull with his brains leaking out, and the gurgling sound of him dying, and they even have like a flashback to it where Ellie's remembering it wrong, but you hear him screaming in agony. Yeah. Where So now Ellie's been, like she's remembering it incorrectly, but she's remembering like screaming her name and asking for help, it's like... Why are you doing this if you want me to ultimately not want Abby to pay for it? I think the whole game weirdly had a bit of a torture porn vibe to it of like it did just the the level of detail in the, the gratuitous the noises. But it's not even like if Joel just if they just shot him if she yeah. or if she just hit him over the head with a baseball bat and it would have been like the like Joel is out in mid conversation like Joel um, with uh, Ellie. And then just off camera, a baseball bat comes in and knocks him out and kills him. Because mm-hmm. uh, I'm not sure if you noticed this. We can end on this where because you played it all in, like, I'm guessing, a couple of sessions. Uh, yeah, um, before you go on to the last point, I don't know okay. how you beat the game quicker than me because um, I remember playing it and seeing you tweet out about, oh, this is like the game of the year because of the dog It's bit. the very start of the game, yes. And I was like hours ahead of you. I played it till six o'clock in the morning. Oh, right, okay. I played it all night, woke up, um, did my work, and then played it all night again. So I did two full sessions, and it was like four o'clock in the morning. And when I got to the section where it says kill Ellie, I went, fuck this, I'm done. Oh, and, then okay. re- and then replayed it later in the day after I'd woken up. Because I was expecting this to be like an hour later. later and then finished half a day before me, and I was like, yeah, what I just played it in like um, three, three sessions, and there were two massive sessions. Yeah, so it took uh, me four days. And, About 27 uh, hours, I think it was. Roughly, I think my playtime at the end was like 30 hours because I spent a lot of time um, scouring for resources. Yeah. So I want to try and be, I like, I want to be like as fully stocked as possible for all encounters. 
Me too, but I think it was just because I was running through a lot of fights. Okay, because I stayed and I like scavenged every single area, so I was like quite well stacked in terms of uh, my items and my like um, resources and stuff by the end of the game. I was fully stocked at the end, like so much to the point where I was trying to craft stuff that I didn't need to pick up more stuff. Yeah, I had that point, and like my very, the very, very, very final fight. Like the last combat room, mm-hmm. I saved all my submachine gun ammo for that bit, so I had like 100 machine gun rounds. <laughs> and just went fucking ham on everybody, because it's a silenced machine gun, so I can use it from like the bushes. Yeah. So I lied down in the bushes, and then when people walked past us, headshot them. Which I felt super cool, like diving into the bushes, and people come over and shout, like, where'd she go? Bang! Headshot. Yeah. Just but anyway, what were you getting to the point of? Or... I completely forgot. I remember it being a good point as well. What, did, what was my start up for it? What did I say to lead into it? What was like the impetus for me saying it? Uh, I don't know because like all I really had was like, oh, um, you said we're going to end on this and I, I'd be in a few days. And what did I say before I'm going to end on this? I can't remember. Because I completely forgot. Yeah. Ah, oh, damn. That's going to frustrate me now because I'll listen to it back when I upload this. I'm like, damn. Like Carl will be like, oh, I remember my point now. I remember my point, but I also don't remember my point. It's going to really, really frustrate me. I'm like slowly just trying to walk back through my memory in my head and see if I can remember any. I do apologise for derailing you. No, oh, no, it's fine. It's um, I think it was a gameplay thing. Is it a gameplay thing? Or was it a story thing? Of like, uh, see, we talked about like, it was like Joel being killed, and it's like if he'd just been killed normally. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Um, to end on for gameplay wise, uh, because you played it in one big session like I did. Did you get really, really pissed off by the end of the game with, um, oh, I'm going to climb through his window, but the character you're with refuses to go through the window first? And you th- and you can know, you know the moment you go through that window, you're going to be attacked from off camera by a clicker or by an enemy. Because it happens about 15 times throughout the game, but because I played it in two big sessions and then like one right at the end, I saw that coming a mile off by the third time. Uh yeah. Like, yeah, for example, I, I when you with Abby, with a lot of the occasions, but I didn't really get annoyed by it or anything. Like for example, with Abby, when you're about to leave that Firefly house, and I could tell, I could tell that I'm going to get tackled from off camera by an enemy because mm. Lev won't leave the door first. Like I'm being forced to go through this door, and I went, and every time I saw it, I'd listen mode and go, "There's no one around. There's no one around for at least twenty fucking feet." And Abby, this survivalist motherfucker who's trained as a trained soldier and never lets anyone take her by surprise, gets sideswiped by a guy who's like 300 pounds overweight. The one time it annoyed me was when I um, got ambushed, and I presume it's a set-piece moment, I well, got yeah, ambushed at a random workbench. Yes, that, that one was cool, though, because I did not expect that, and I'm glad I did it once. But at the same time, I then went, well, this is kind of bullshit, because I had, like listened around the entire yes, area that's paid what pissed so much me off. attention made sure there was no one in the room and then twice, the enemy spawns in out of and nowhere. then pressed triangle and got attacked it's like the one with um, when Yara gets killed yeah I knew she was going I knew something was going to happen because that entire time it's Yara and Lev running ahead mm-hmm. but we got to a certain doorway and Yara's just stood next to it ah uh, okay and I stood there and was like okay you go through first because if you stay behind I want you in front of me so I know which way to go. Mm-hmm. And I stood there for about 30 seconds and she's not moving. Oh, then, then there's a cut scene through this door. So I went into listen mode, no one around. Go through the door, cut scene starts. And again, this super paranoid motherfucker who's like one of the most competent people in that apocalypse gets sideswiped by people they didn't see. Yeah. And, and it happens like 10 times. Mm-hmm. And I could see it coming every single fucking time. And it pissed me off tonight. It happens to like Ellie. So, oh, I'm walking, but the game's kind of railroading me to walk in a certain direction. I'm yeah. going to step into a trap, which I know is coming, but I can't avoid because the game makes me step in. It's like, oh! And I guess that is kind of just a trope of being like a naughty dog type game. But it happens so much. Like, but I they think it fla- happens so much because, again, yeah, we played it in two, three sittings. In two, three sittings, yeah. But they rely on it so much. Like They use it as the cheap way to get a shocked reaction out of you. And I think that's what turned me around on it, where it's it's something that they utilise multiple times. Like, how many... It's like at least four examples of, oh, squeeze through this area. And it's like, well, when's the clicker going to come through? Yeah. 
But when's the clicker that I didn't see in listen mode that's not in this building that you're going to spawn in to attack me as I get to the end of this corridor? The only time it got me, not cutscene-wise, was those fuckers that hide in the wall. Yes, and I got to the point where I just shot them. Every but time I, I saw one of those, I, I just shot it. It happened infrequently enough that it only happened three times to me the entire game, and I wasn't seeing it come in. Do you know the worst part about that is as well? Um, you can walk past them and it won't happen, and then you can walk back and it happens again. And it can kill you on your own low health. Oh, I was never on low health. <laughs> because I was play I think I played on survivor mode. Like you know the one above um easy. Right. Which is why I was so, being so aggressive because I had so little ammo. I just played on whatever the normal difficulty oh, Okay. Was. Uh, and they can kill you if you have low enough health. Because they'll charge across the room and get you in a grab animation, that's instant. Oh no, I don't mean the ones that like would charge across the room. I mean the ones that were literally like stuck inside yeah. the wall as you walk past. Yeah, because they can jump out and grab you. Yeah. And um, the only way to get them off you quickly enough is if you've got a shiv, but even then you still take a little bit of damage, which can kill you. So oh, right, I had, right. um, one of the things that happened to me that really got me annoyed was, what I saw it, looked at it, walked past holding my gun pointed at the wall. Didn't happen. Go out, check the room, kill some things, come back in, so I remember, okay, I shot a, gu- a bullet and there's another bullet in the room. Yeah. So I'm going to go back and get those bullets that I saw, then he popped out the wall and got me and killed me because I had low oh, health. God. Because I thought, oh, the encounters are over. I'll wait until I get more healing items before I waste a health thing. Yeah, yeah. Because I only use health things before encounters because I want to like make sure I've got as much as I can. Sometimes you find like the candy bars and stuff in the environment that give you a little bit of health. And that yeah, killed me yeah, yeah. and it restarted the entire encounter. And I just got... like It's so cheap a trope for them to do. I'm, fu- I'm surprised they didn't do the workbench one more. Yeah, yeah. And I'm kind of glad that they had the restraint to only do it once mm-hmm. and in a game like that you get one you get one of them because they think you, you do, do it in dead yeah. space as well where in dead space there is one encounter in one game where enemies attack you in a save point or near a workbench yeah yeah and they only do it once or in god of war where they hide enemies inside chests but they only do it like until you're about like, 20 hours through the game so it does take you by surprise and they don't do it again yeah yeah so, but I was expecting that to happen a hell of a lot more because at so many points, like almost all of the drama in that game and all the things that are like story beats that are supposed to surprise you happen when you're completely blindsided by a cutscene thing you would have avoided if you had control of Ellie or Abby. True, yeah, yeah. Like, because my version of Abby, the way I played her, would in no way have been sideswiped by a guy who came out of nowhere, because I would have, one, known he was there, and two, shot him in the leg and punched him to death. Oh, totally. And I think it's similar to the cutscene where Ellie gets trapped in, like, a rabbit trap thing. And, like, yeah, my version of Ellie would not have fallen for that, and she definitely would not have been <laughs> um, uh, defeated by it. I did like, though, she, she got out in a very Ellie way. She did. She did. She used, like, you know, her immunity to advantage. Mm. But, like, the fact that it's... Oh, this stealthy character that uses traps all the time and is basically like the trap master didn't get like she got caught out by the trap. Yeah, and she doesn't see it coming. Yeah, even though there are like hanged things in it. Same with Abby, where this hyper vigilant character who's constantly on edge and aware of all surroundings at all times gets sideswiped by a three hundred pound man who can barely move. And I guess it's kind of like you know the opposite to plot armor. Like it's just it that it has to happen. But yeah, it is a. It is an overused trope in games in general. And it's really overused in that game. And it's usually used for shock value. Yeah. Because that's how a lot of the times like your characters get killed. Is when you get sideswiped off screen by something you could have avoided if you had control of your character. And the other thing that I will say is like that's similar is just the fact that we still live in a day and age where combat music is a thing. And like, oh, without surveying the room... The characters just know, oh, there's no one left, and the music can stop now. Yeah. You also have the thing as well, where if you walk into a room and you see waist-high cover, you know there's going to be enemies. Oh, yeah, the amount of times I turned around to Jenna as we were looking around and was like, oh, well, uh, combat's about to happen here then. Yeah, because wait, there's waist-high cover. And um, speaking of combat, I, um, another thought I had, again, this is a, a super cliche thing to have happened, but it would have made the entire story experience for me very, a bit more palatable. Like... I would have been okay, because I, I thought again, like, how, would I, how would I have been okay with Joel dying the way that he did? Mm. And I would have been okay if Joel went down swinging. 
And I mean that in the sense that um, if they would have sent an army after Joel, yeah, and your final thing, do you know, like the Zack Fair moment in Crisis Core, where it's just there is an unwinnable wave of enemies that you've got to fight. I, I guess and, so, yeah. But like, obviously, the the moment that he lets his guard down and she knows who he is, it's like. Well, yeah, Abby's not the type of person to fuck around. She just shoots his leg off. Like, he's got yeah. no chance. He's got no chance. And I, I get it. That's what they want to do. But I would have... That moment for me would have stung a lot less if Joel would have gone down swinging. Like, if he'd have at least taken one of them out with him. Or had any, like, moment to, like, you know, he's still got that spark about him. That's the reason I mean. But no, he, he goes... He's, he dies horribly beaten to death, screaming in agony. And I think it's get... one of those of like, it's not to say that Joel wasn't competent anymore. I think it's just, oh, he had no idea after four years there'd be people hunting him still. Still. And they take him down like without him even getting a, a moment's notice. It is, but say, I would just think, I, I thought, like, would I have been, how would I have been okay with that death scene? And for me, it was if Joel went down like a fucking hero. Like if like Ellie came in, there was like 40 dead people around him. Like, but do you know at the same where, like, time, yes. Um, would it have been believable if Joel had any fighting chance that he didn't make it out? Uh, probably not. Now, well, I, I was hoping like for a noble six moment. Yeah, I get it because like it does make the death seem a bit more palatable. But like at the same time, after taking down an entire hospital worth of fireflies with like a couple of <laughs> weapons, would that man have gone down? That's the thing that gets me is because he died in such an unsatisfying way, especially as well when I know he's like he's a lot more calm and reserved, but like the Joel in the previous game literally sniffed out an ambush from a quarter mile away in a car. Yeah, again, I think that is just a case of like he's lost his like paranoia and his edge. He's lost in that his way. edge. Oh man, but like if he'd have just gone down, like Ellie does more time, she slashes that guy across the face. Like, I totally it, get what you mean, but yeah, I think like the Joel that I have in my head would have never got taken down by eight people. If he exactly, and that's why it was so frustrating that he goes down so easily. Like, if at the very least, like he he could like him and Tommy sniffed out what was going on, and maybe they put you in like a fight scene mm. where there's like a couple of nameless jobbers in that group, and you and Tommy work together and take a few of them out, and then they get the drop on you in the Naughty Dog style cutscene of they attack you from off camera and you can't <laughs> help it. Just so at the very least you feel like you had some ability to stop it, even though you don't. Just so you feel like maybe Joel could have survived if things went a little bit different instead of they blow his leg off with a shotgun. I mean, maybe, but I think I might have also been annoyed. Like, oh man, Joel didn't take down an entire room of enemies Which when he, he knew it was like he, he, he was on edge. Or maybe have the thing if they shoot him in the leg. If like she shoots him in the leg with a gun and then like you and Tommy run out and then you're injured. Yeah, and yeah. they and they get the drop on him because he's injured. But then, like you and Tommy, like you take a few of them down. Mm-hmm. Like, like I said, that noble six moment where just you as the player get that little bit of catharsis, where it's like you can take a couple of the enemies out, but they do eventually overwhelm you. I'm sure there could have been a way to do it, but yeah, I think it would have for me had to have been that they sent like a complete fucking army at Joel, and he took most of them out, which they have. Uh, yeah, 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 like, but obviously the fight in their own war or whatever but yeah but like they could have done that they could have sent like a, they could have in that group had like a dozen or so extra nameless jobbers who were yeah, part they of the group done, they could have done it that way but if it was the, the case scenario of all oh, they they sent like eight people a dozen people whatever and Joel didn't or, take them all out I've been kind of annoyed or do it that you run into an area that's full of infected mm-hmm, yeah and you've you got to take out the infected as well and they walk in and Joel's taken like 30 40 infected yeah, maybe that way, yeah. And they kill him that way. Well, um, I don't know. I just uh, the the death for me felt super unsatisfying, and it's I think it's really the impetus for a lot of people of why they don't like the game. Yeah, and I can understand why because it completely soured my experience. And the fact it's so early in the game as well. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like even if they just move that death scene to the end, if they maybe, just put it I to the end, I do think it had to happen that early for like. You know, for it to focus Ellie's on revenge being mission. Ellie's revenge story. But no, um, like all in all, a very, very strong game, and I will. I, it's earned the like the critical praise that it's got. I and like for, you know having a conversation with you, and you're the only real like person outside of the room that I was in that I've had a discussion with. 
Yes. Um, it's surprising to me that it's been so overwhelmingly positive because we've come out both with, you know, especially gameplay-wise, saying it's a solid game, but story-wise and character-wise, we've been on very opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah, like there are some moments that are incredibly weak and like if people want to give it a 10 out of 10, same time they can. And I don't think it needs to be clarified, but all the people who are shitting on the game for like, oh, because it has a gay character in it. And the people spreading like the rumors like, oh yeah, Abby is trans because she looks like a man. It's like no women. And sending death threats to the developers of calling it like SJW nonsense. Like, yeah. fuck off. Like you, you are so like, just you are the worst element of gaming. And totally. I hate and you. I think it says it all that these people had these conceptions before they played the game themselves. Yeah, and they're like review bombing and stuff. So like, my opinion is like I guess it's probably nice for you listen, like I don't like some things that the game did, but I can appreciate some of the things that it did. And the fact that I am like talking to you and I've workshopped things in my head to make it better for me shows that I really do like the game. It's just that I don't it wasn't as satisfying for me as a fan of the first one. And I think, um, yeah, like one thing we can both agree on is the gameplay is fantastic, but... Mechanically, yeah, it's flawless, yeah, as I said. I think the fact that we can sit here and have this conversation and be so passionate about it, even though we've got different opinions on certain yeah. things, just go and try it yourself because we both clearly... Well, no one listening to this. Someone listening to it. Think it had an impact in some way. It did, yes. It just fell flat for me because I, I'm a cynical person and mm-hmm. I play games a lot. So a lot of the things that they try to do, like the tricks and the hooks I could see through to yeah. try and make me like this character, they fell very flat for me and they didn't work. But at the same time, I can understand why they would work for other people or why some people have had the exact opposite reaction to me and they think it's a really good story. But yeah, for me, very, very good game. Um, I can see why it'd be divisive, but I can't see why it'd be as, as divisive as it is. And I'm not yeah, going to put a numerical um, score against what I think about it because I think that's like the that ruins reviews because it yeah. removes all nuance from a thing. I'm just going to say I like it. I I am glad that I played it. I will play it again. But there are parts of it that I'd change. I really enjoy. Well, I didn't enjoy it to be honest. That's it's a, I enjoyed the moment to moment gameplay. It was I, super I enjoyed fun. the gameplay. I did. I like yeah. You you understand what I mean when I yeah. say I didn't enjoy like. I liked playing the game and I'm really glad that I experienced it. I'm not sure that brutally murdering people and hearing screams and seeing yeah. people's heads pop off for 30 hours is enjoyable. Uh, the gameplay to do it, though. Like, the gameplay to do it, fun. though, fantastic. I really yeah, because I'm, it, I but... play a lot of games. Like, I'm so removed. From, and I know for a fact they put that all in to try and make you feel bad. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to feel bad. Because it's a fucking video game, but I can see why people would be affected by it. Because they they spent a lot, they went to a lot of effort to make it as impactful as possible. They did. Yeah. I really need to piss now, so you can hear I'm talking fast. So any final thoughts, Luke, before we go? So I need to go pee. Super uh, bad. Eh, I don't think it was a necessary sequel, but now that I've got it, I'm glad. And I, I thought it was a great game. Yeah, it's a story that didn't need to be told, but the game itself is very good, and I recommend it. Bye bye.